I know. But that's, that's a great question because they're still working out town in corn concrete and it's 20 degrees. And that, that's, I always get nervous about yeah, that. Yeah, scary. Yeah, it's nervous. All right. Uh, any other questions about bills? Hearing none, uh, can I have a roll call, please? Margarito? Uh, yes. Boyce? Yes. Morelli? Yes. And Delaney? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Any citizens here wishing to address the highway department tonight? Seeing none, we're going to uh, other business. Tonight we have the approval of ordinance number 2018-5. It's a tax levy for uh, next year. Um, we did have a workshop on this. I believe, I don't know, the date got off the top of my head. It was just a couple weeks ago. But um, now it's time to pass the uh, levy for next year. Um, as we discussed in our meeting, uh, basically we ask for 5%, but we basically have to be in a tax levy or tax, tax, uh, yeah, cap, <laughs> or tax, tax cap, uh, township and county that we only have, to, we can only take the CPI anyway. Uh, so that being said, I would entertain a motion to approve the levy 2018-5. I'll make that motion. I got a motion by Barb Delaney. A second. Second by Barb Boyce. Are there any questions of the levy? So just for clarification, we are asking for no more than 5%. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. In order to ask for more, we have the black box. Right. Now, now, if you've been following the paper, there's like two or three black boxes in every day in the newspaper. It's amazing. I, I'm surprised how many need that. But no, we are not. Exactly. And, I, and I'm actually surprised. If someone black box, like I could ask for 30%, I'm only going to get what the CPI is. So why would people be black boxing? Do you have any idea? I mean, it doesn't concern our levy, but I'm just curious you know, how that works. It's a tax, you're in a tax cap. I, I was just curious if anyone knew that in terms of that would be a good why would you ask for more than our CPI? Right. I think you have to ask that with Dave. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I was curious if this is something. Um, you could ask for 1,000%, you're only going to get the um, any other questions for the levy? Here, then, can I have a roll call, please? Alvarico? Yes. Delaney? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Boyce? Yes. All right. Uh, next on the agenda, John? Oh, wait, this is before. I will make it uh, fairly quick. We did finish up that paving project. That went extremely well. Um, uh, I didn't get much of a notice, so that was a little disappointing, so we had to go out kind of rush some culverts. Uh, we'd like to put all the culverts that cross the roads in before they pave it so we're not the, the, that guy, you know, that puts the road down here digging it up a week later. Uh, so we, we had to, we worked a little bit over time to get the three culverts in and uh, uh, it worked out really well. Uh, uh, we also did the uh, project in Bonnie Bray. We had the three catch bases that I've been talking about that have collapsed uh, and they, those were repaired as well. So that was good uh, since the last meeting. All the plow equipment is on the trucks. We've been out uh, once or twice uh, salting. Uh, we plowed a little bit of snow on that real slushy, wet stuff. That was kind of crazy where when you walk on it, it just turns to water. It doesn't, it's not really snow, but uh, the guys did a good job. Um, we continue to work with land use on the flooding uh, project and uh, the flood uh, study and, and work being done in uh, Fairmont community. Um, that's going, that's moving forward and, and they're getting closer to being done every day. You know, that sounds kind of weird, but this is a multi-year project, so they're actually getting pretty close, so that's that's good news. Um, and uh, last but not least, I don't know if anybody's seen Cousin Vinny, where he came in with that suit because the store, had, the, the whole store had the flu and they were closed. My whole department has the flu. <laughs> I mean, I had a, this, no, I had a flu shot. This is the first time in, uh, in like 10 years I took a flu shot. I'm the only one that's not sick. So I think I had one, two guys there today, maybe three. Uh, so anyways, uh, they're gradually, as I talk to them over a week, they're getting better. So um, uh, hopefully we don't have to go out in the morning because there's supposed to be some freezing rain. And they will be there, sick or not sick, but the whole department has the flu. If, 
There's snow tonight. Do I have to come out? Sure, Ron, you and I have to come out. I was going to be a smart aleck. You go, well, I've seen what you do on here. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, they're, they're well enough. They could, they could you know, clear the roads and probably go back home. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> I get all the calls. It's, they're not coming in. They're not coming in. So it's like, what do you do with two guys? So we're cleaning the shop and things of that nature, checking the oil in the truck. You know, just we're, we're keeping busy. But... I've never had this happen where like the whole place has the flu all the time. So then they're all pointing fingers to the blame, you know, which I actually started. With. But uh, but that's all I have. Everybody have a wonderful, safe, safe uh, Christmas and New Year. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I have no other business uh, or anything else to take care of in the road and bridge. Unless anybody else has any other questions, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I got a motion. I got a motion by Barb Delaney. I'll second, second it. Barb Boyce, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I just have it. Thank you. Moving on to our general assistance meeting. Again, uh, you have the minutes of the monthly meeting of November 5th, 2018 in your packets. Uh, I do need a motion to pass the minutes. I'll make that motion. I got a motion by Barb Boyce. Second. Second by Barb Delaney. Um, are there any questions in the minutes for the uh, general assistance tonight? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I have it, thank you. We have the bills of $8,011.63. I do need a motion to pay the bills. I'll make that motion to pay the bills. I've got a motion by uh, Barb Boyce. Second. And second by Barb Delaney. Are there any questions of the bills tonight? Hearing none, uh, can I have a roll call, please? Alvarico? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Delaney? Yes. Boyce? Yes. All right. Motion carries. Are there any citizens wishing to address the board for the general assistance tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on to, uh, I really have no new business or old business. I just wanted to make sure that everybody did Receive their financial aid monthly report. We have three on emergency general assistance this month and one on general assistance. And you can see the breakdown of the payments that were made in the financial breakdown. I have no other business in general assistance, so I will uh, entertain the motion. I have a question, Ron. Okay. How many, and maybe it's during the report, how many Christmas vouchers do we? Uh, right now they're still coming in. They haven't been released yet. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, all right. Um, we did make it uh, back two years ago. That, that, um, that back in the day, those Christmas vouchers were just given out to anybody that applied for it. We did make them income qualified mm -hmm. now. So there are a lot less that have to prove. What was the Christmas? What are Christmas vouchers? There's a program that was started back way way before my time, mm -hmm. that we did through general assistance, we gave out 25,000 gift cards oh, okay. to residents that, you know, for Christmas help okay. Christmas okay. dinners and stuff. And it was no qualification. And that's like, you know, we like had 60,000 residents in support without any kind of qualification, so I didn't get qualified. Okay. So. Um, I have no other business, and uh, any other questions? Right. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Make that motion. I got a motion by Barb Boyce. Second. By Barb Delaney. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nice have it. Thank you. Moving on to our senior fund. Again, uh, we have the minutes of the monthly meeting of November 5th, 2018. I do need a motion to uh, approve the minutes. I'll make that motion. I got a motion by Barb Delaney. I'll second it. Second by Barb Boyce. Any questions of the minutes for the senior fund? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. You have the bills of $31,686.62. I do need a motion to pay the bills. I'll make that motion. I got a motion by Barb Delaney. I'll second it. Second by Barb Boyce. Any questions of the bills tonight? Con, can I just ask? There, there's a, 
the senior breakfast charge for Prairie Bluff? I mean, was that for the October breakfast? Senior breakfast? Yeah, I'm sure that was for the. Um, which one are you referring to? Is that for the. Uh, On the senior fund, the first page, um, first set of checks that were written, uh, there was a $6 check for Prairie Bluff. That'd be for the Prairie Bluff, yes. Okay. That's I the just, golf course, actually, for the breakfast for all three days. Okay. Any other questions? Are you uh, not doing the senior service quarterly lunch anymore? You know what? That was two meals on wheels, and we really haven't. They haven't requested it. I think that kind of um, went to the wayside. Went to the wayside. Um, I'm hoping to get that started again. I'll, I'll talk about that when we get into our old business. Um, but no, we haven't been doing that. Anymore. Any other questions? Can I uh, have a roll call, please? Paul oh, Marico? Yes. Boyce? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Fellini? Yes. The motion carries. Any citizens wishing to address the senior fund tonight? Seeing none, we're going to. I have really no new business tonight. I will have a couple of things I would like to talk about, just bring up a little casually here on old business. Uh, as long as you brought up that uh, Meals on Wheels, I do have a meeting. I know we had. A ribbon cutting, the Meals and Wheels program was supposed to move into our building. Once we had that ribbon cutting, it sounded to me like there was a big change in who was running what at the Meals and Wheels side. So things have slowed down. The lady that was supposed to be doing it no longer is there. I'm not sure if she's off because of an injury or because I know she had a broken arm or if they let her go or what. But we are talking again and they are coming in my office tomorrow morning with the contract to talk about it, sign the contract that we all agree on. So hopefully they're going to be in by the end of the year. I'm a little very disappointed in how long it's taken to get everything worked out, but they have issues on their side. It took us, it took us to get through all the things first, and now they're still thinking that way. Eventually both sides are going to be ready. The other thing uh, that I want to bring up really quick was uh, we have, have had some discussions on a backup system for our senior bus. There's been times that uh, our bus has broken, or not broken down, but has been sidelined because of uh, somebody falling or an emergency, and then the bus can't leave that situation, and then we fall behind. Um, we stopped our employees who were using their personal cars about three months ago and there's been um, some people complaining and we've turned down a lot of people on rides now. Um, I asked before if you'd like me to investigate whether we should, you know, what we can buy, either a used van, a new van, a car, something, um, but I don't want to really go looking for everything and getting all the things out if you guys aren't interested at all. And that's what I've asked before. You guys weren't interested, so I haven't looked. There has been more and more talk about doing it again. I will look, I will bust my butt trying to find something that will work out for us if that's the feeling of the board. So I'm going to ask you like a, just a straw poll. If that's what you guys would like me to do, I'll look. Anybody have any comments? I have a comment and a question. My first question would be, would Michelle or whoever does the scheduling in the office be able to show us trustees an idea that we are in need of a third vehicle with the schedule that she does? Um, and then to start moving forward, um, I'm not opposed to moving forward with a inexpensive, maybe used car. I um, and not too sure that we should be investing that much money in another bus because the cost of the buses obviously are a lot more. So that's just well, I agree with you 100%. I was never in, uh, thinking of a third bus or a van, even or a van. van or something like that. Okay. 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 Okay.
I mean, I'm just thinking more or less like a car for an emergency type situation, one person or two per persons that need it. But I'd still like to see before we make that decision from Michelle that we are we have a need for that. There is a demand for that. Well, I think about three or four months ago, I gave you this list of everybody that we denied it and how many people we were giving back to. And we, there was quite a few right? we still have that. I can get it again, that's what I'm talking about. I think about the list that you gave us for the people who were given the right to not take it. Yeah, we did tell them to put the list together. You know, if I might make, make a suggestion, it might be a good idea, like Chris makes up her monthly report, just to have a monthly bus report um, every month so that there's just a general uh, sure. idea of the demand for it. Yeah. 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 I have no problem with that yeah. today. Uh, that's a lot, a lot of my time myself and that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Well, you look at this person. They can't do the same kind of thing. And I, did, I do want to add, Barb, I think you were um, not to attend that meeting when one of the employees that uh, worked for Standard Shuttle when we had uh, their service uh, did say in the original contract that was made between Standard Shuttle and Lockport Township back when the first referendum passed, uh, there was a clause in there that a backup, there had to be some kind of a backup system. So, um, you know, that was a, a, a little bit of an eye opener for everybody. So, okay. what was the eye opener to me? And I didn't realize that our employees were using their personal cars as much as they were. I knew they did it once in a while, but they were all the time. And that's what I thought. This is probably not a good situation. So I put an end to that. But certainly, I see. I will, like I said, if everybody feels comfortable with it, I'll, I'll look to see what's out there. Actually, the city of Lockport just sent me, um, they have a truck, or not a truck, it's a SUV, Ford es Escape. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's kind of small, it's not like that. But 2015, that they have that they're willing to sell us. Because they don't have use. They have here at fifteen thousand ninety nine dollars. Well, that's I don't care. I haven't talked to him. Says here the trade in value is twelve three seventy five. Like I said, I really haven't looked that much into this because. All right. Well, that's just my opinion. I don't know how the other trustees. Uh, Barb, do you have a Yeah, I would say, you know, start looking for a used vehicle, maybe an SUV. You know. The escape is kind of small, but if you're going to get a car, you know, it's small too. And the girls were using, you know, their cars. Well, Michelle has an SUV, but um, probably something like that over a van. You know, just like the girls were using their cars, you know. I'm fine with that. Okay. Dean, do you have a... Um, I still have, you know, kind of mixed feelings, but I mean, I'm, I'm not going to stop you from, you know, looking into a, a spare vehicle. I mean, nowadays there's so many options, like the Uber and stuff like that. I don't know if it would be cheaper to yeah. just get somebody an Uber. You know, I know you had that list that we had, uh, you know, numerous uh, residents who, you know, needed to be picked up. And, uh, you know, going through the list, it, it seemed like, you know, maybe between five a month, you know, maybe, you know, ten on a real busy month, which, like I said, I don't know, uh, trying to figure out if it had something to do with scheduling and or if there was a way around it or, like you said, there was an issue where, you know, there was a resident who fell going into a store and the bus driver waited there for an ambulance. Well, I would hope the ambulance got there pretty quick, but I guess, you know, it, it uh, I could tell you there some time. I'm real proud of our drivers, and, I, and I'm going to bore you guys to death again with the story that just happened about a week and a half ago, a few weeks ago. Bus driver went out to pick up a resident that's a regular. Uh, he went to the house. He didn't come out. He waited. He called. He didn't answer his phone. He went to the door, knocked on the door. The resident didn't answer. He looked in. The resident was laying down. He'd fallen. He couldn't get up. So he called the office, we called 911, 
fireman got there, they got him up. He refused to go to the back of it. But that bus then was tied up. It couldn't go anywhere. He's not going to just grab off the vehicle. He's got to wait till the ambulance gets there, make sure he did end up taking him. He got up, we took him to his appointment, we got him breakfast, we got him back home. You know, but that's what they do. They go above and beyond way up there. But that backed everything else up. And that's why they, they say we, if we have another little vehicle here, we can go out and get the rest of the people on time rather than wait for three hours because the bus is like that. Those are the situations that come up. And they come up a lot more than you think. Yeah, that's good. Deal. But anyway, I don't mean to. Well, just to move forward, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, keep talking about this until it actually happens, but I mean, is there something that we can put into place as far as setting some restriction? I mean, the one individual who um, gave me a call basically complained that she was not able, she had to cancel one of her um, appointments, and I asked, well, how often during the week do you use our bus? She says, five days a week. Now, to me, I just thought that was a little taken advantage of the township, but somebody else could have been taking her place who was in need of it. And I will tell you, I don't know the resident, but I will tell you this. We don't take residents on a regular scheduled basis five days a week unless the bus is there the court. You know, we bump those people from medical people, other people first. Okay. But she made it sound as though if she had therapy five days a week, we don't, she had We involved. don't have standard appointments. Okay. The only ones we do have standard pickups are like maybe three days or two days a week are dialysis. Right. That's understandable. Okay. All right. Dialysis. Which is a life and situation. Okay. So, no, we don't bring people in therapy on a regular basis. Okay. So anyway, okay, I will start looking at some stuff, and I will hopefully get some things to you by next month. I'll get some ideas, and again, all I, all I really want to do is be able to take care of the residents in situations when we need to take care of them. All right, I don't have anything else. Um, I did bring up the meals and the wheels. I don't have anything else on the senior agenda, unless somebody has a question. Hearing none, I'll entertain an idea to uh, adjourn. I make the motion. I make a motion to adjourn by the fire voice. Second. Second by the fire of the lane. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. On your moving on to the town fund. Uh, in your packet, you have the minutes again of the monthly meeting of November 5th for the town fund and the workshop meeting of November 19th, 2019 on the I do. I will entertain a motion to accept the minutes. I make a motion to accept the minutes. I have a motion by the fire voice. Second. Second by the fire lady. Any questions of the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Yeah. You have the bills of one hundred and fifteen thousand six hundred and seventy-nine dollars and ninety-six cents. I have a motion to pay the bills. I have a motion to pay the uh, bills by Dr. Boyce. Second. Second by Dr. Lady. Any questions of bills? Uh, yeah, I have two questions. The first one is um, on page four, the last bill being paid to Century Exterminating for $750. What was that for? Okay. We uh, had a situation where there was some patent. And I thought it was an emergency and I don't know. Do we know where they came from? Well, yeah, the guy came through, we did a little investigation. He's supposed to be a cockroach expert, he said. But we thought we went through the whole building, he looked. Basically it is a lot of the cardboard boxes that are coming in through the food pantry. And I thought for the food pantry I said we cannot have boxes so we go Because those cockroaches come in and they eat the glue from the boxes. Well, then, if it's being caused by the food pantry, should we not have them pay us this bill? Well, I did. My thought was this. Let's get rid of the cockroaches. I have talked to the food pantry. They have the Midwest Exterminator that would come from the And they're going to be taking care of it themselves. That's right. Okay. So, yeah. But I thought, before it gets out of hand, just take care of the problem. 
Are they going to be showing us that they have the exterminator coming in here every month? Um, I did talk to um, Jim Naylor. So give us documentation on that. Because is that what our contract even says? I think it did. You know, in our contract, they said they would have an exterminator. And I think they were doing it on a volunteer basis. They got a volunteer level. We show them all the time. Not at any point. You guys have to have this that sure. But the guy who's coming through is not going to be the volunteer. I mean, it's Midwest. It's, okay. it's Midwest. It's a company. Oh, it's a company. Okay. All right. So, okay. That's the way I No, we don't want to mm -hmm. All right, yeah, just the other question is on page three. Um, at the very top, um, there's four employees. It looks like it just says extra hours. So what are the extra hours? Um, basically, that's a lot of hours that has come up through the year. I can, you know, we can count time. Put on count time. Now I'm just trying to think about that. So it's caught up on count time. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, can I have a roll call, please? El Rigo? Yes. Delaney? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Boyce? Yes. Motion carries. Any citizens wishing to address the board for the town fund tonight? Seeing none, we'll go we'll, we'll skip the assessor's reports and see that she's uh, here tonight and go on to the clerk's report. Okay, thank you, Ron. Uh, so the report you have in front of you, uh, we had a um, three-hour training session for our new website with the Highway Department of Supervisor's Office. Um, this is a new and informative website, and we're still in the learning process. Uh, this website has a lot of quicker access for employees. Um, for example, um, right now the deputy clerk lets, for instance, say she took her 10 to 15 steps to get in the packet uh, online and the agendas right now and it's only about five steps. So it's a, it's a, it's a lot more efficient. Um, so look for that website to be up and coming soon. We're excited about it. I think it looks good. Um, you know, John and his office are doing their part and Ron and his office are doing their part. So um, hopefully it will be up soon. Uh, the Youth Committee, had, we had a meeting on Wednesday, November 28th, and uh, we discussed having a family fun day event in May of 2019. Uh, this event would be similar to like the senior uh, fair held at Blackboard Township. So there's more information to follow on that after our meeting in December or January. The diaper distribution. So the clerk's office has been happy to, to supply diapers to those in need. Um, and if you do need diapers, um, we, we are um, currently giving out diapers with the help of United Way of Will County and Sarah is here in the audience and hopefully she's going to speak to us um, momentarily. Uh, and it's been a popular program and I think the need is definitely there in our community. Um, I spoke with Attorney Mueller about creating some kind of intergovernmental agreement with United Way of Will County for this important partnership. So, Hopefully we'll get that um, to you coming soon. Uh, Ron, I, this, the next one is the Policy and Procedure Committee. Um, you know, uh, Trustee Delaney, you know, had a comment about some policies and procedures that she would like to see, and I wondered if maybe the board would allow us to put together some kind of a committee so we could um, get some of these implemented and enforced. Um, so I don't know if that maybe we could do that at the next meeting, put that on the agenda. I would be willing to be on that committee. So. And Denise, did you not say you think Karen might have an interest? In yes, she's not that? present tonight, but I, you know, I, I know talking to her you know, uh, earlier on, I mentioned it, and she said yes, she would. So. I would support the idea if we can get it on the agenda. Okay. Um, um, thank you. Um, and document management, um, so we, as you know, we have uh, laser fish that we're uh, implement or putting in, scanning in all the documents that the clerk's office has um, as a record keeper. So, so far, we've done, well, we, I shouldn't say we, but um, 
the, the deputy clerk uh, about 10,000 documents, and there were roughly about 5,000 more to go. And this is just for a two-year period, so it has been a long process. Um, but, you know, it's, like I said, some, someday we're going to get Ron's office on board and he's going to be able to look at all the documents, <laughs> and uh, we can go from there. And then we have the correspondence um, in regards to the Public Act 100-0983 that goes into effect January 1st. And that was in your packet, and that is a new law that, um, that, that Governor Rauner passed that the clerk is to attest all signatures on the, for the supervisor. So Ron and I and um, actually Gary have been, um, have been in conversation about this new law. And um, I'm just going to go on the advice of, if it's the attorney's advice, how we sh should proceed with this new law. I know Ron's got some, some suggestions also. So um, as the clerk, I would just like to make sure that whatever we do and however we continue on after January 1st, that we do have something in writing that we are complying to this new law. All right, thank you. Um, I will comment on that new law. Um, I did attend the conferences down at TOI um, in November, and there was a lot of discussion as to how this law is going to be implemented. Basically, it was explained to everybody that the state legislatures in the House passed the law, Governor Ronald Sound signed it, but it hasn't gone to the rules committee. So how the law is going to be implemented, nobody really knows it, how, how they want us to do this. It suggested that uh, in your packet that Denise signs, I'm going to give you a copy of the check. Okay. You know, pass those down to everybody. <laughs> I got one here. Um, you can see at the top of the check, the authorized signature. It says authorized signature. TOI suggested that uh, the clerk signs there, but the clerk can't sign an authorized. She's not an authorized signature. So um, the, the bank is telling me she can't sign on the authorized signature. She signed it in is an authorized signature. It was suggested to us in TOI that because we have professional, you know, checks made out, the big checks down at the bottom, you'll see the supervisor and the clerk sign. That's where she's attesting my signature. And I signed up there. You said, if she signed it up there and then we send the check out, we no longer have proof that she attested that the check is gone. But it looks like my understanding is it says, how do I attest the signature? It just says, clerks will now sign their name along with the authorized signature. So it still has to be both of them. This can't just be And she is on the check. On the right. And we keep this and Denise puts it in her file and we have this bottom section of the check at all times. So Ron's really talking about <clears throat> public voucher. So and that is this is the bottom. We have for every check we have a voucher going to the township. And what I do now is certify that this is the correct so I do that currently. If I'm not mistaken, this law goes beyond that, Gary. Um, well, it, I mean, here's a lot of saying is that you as a clerk are simply attesting that whoever signed that that's their signature. You're not attesting as to whether that amount of check is correct, the payee is correct or anything other than the fact that the person signed it as if they were signed. That's it. It's almost like a notary. Similar. Similar. So, mm -hmm. But it's on, or at least the statute that was passed, it's on it. It would be on every check with the months for the highway department. Actually, when we talked about it in Springfield, they said this, the law doesn't say it's on it. It says it. Just to um, attest to that, I signed the check. It's not on this part of the check. It never specifies that part. That's why I'm saying we can currently do it the same way. And that's what I was told on the screen. Continue doing it the same way. She is signing the checks. 
until the rules committee says this. So I thought we continued looking at it. And we used to just initial it, now we're fully signing it, and Denise is going to fully sign it, and she'll even write the test at the end of the sheet. And you have talked to other townships to find out how they're going to implement this new law, and a lot of them are just really waiting. They're like in this um, interim period right now where they're waiting to find out um, either for the advice of their attorney or, or and or you know talking with their supervisor. So uh, I would I would feel comfortable, like I said, if we had something in writing um, stating that we have complied with this law. How we do that. Is, is, is okay. I can attest to the signature of the bill list, um, which has been brought up to by the township. So. so, my thought is just to until the rules committees in, in Springfield have a definite way as to how they're going to implement this law, that we continue you attesting my signature on the vouchers, and I will put an extra line on all bill lists where you can attest the bill lists. Okay, like I said, Ron, just as long as it's in writing somehow, somewhere, so <laughs> I would be um, much obliged for that. Okay. Any other questions on that? Rob, I'm just, you know, trying to figure it out. It says that, you know, the clerk is going to attest just to the signatures on it. Yeah. So it's not like she's going to say all these Not like she's, uh, Proving the amounts or anything like that. He has no what the check was written for is just that your signature is on it, which it already always has been. Right. So that's just it's, yeah, it's she's always been another she's been doing this forever anyway. Right. The right. uh, check. Sure. So that's, that's why I'm just wondering. I don't know if Gary knows anything different as far as so really this law or statute or whatever the writing for us really hasn't changed anything. No, it's really not intended for our it's really intended for some townships where they had an issue with checks being drawn by persons who aren't authorized to do it. And they went through and figured the money's gone and we're trying to collect it back. The money's literally gone and we can't get it back. So this is a way to try to address that perhaps with a sledgehammer approach. But um, clearly in our, uh, our township, um, we have been doing this since at least the 27 years I've been Well, uh, I tell you what, yeah, <laughs> we talked to our bookkeeper who's been here for 42 years. She, she said we've always done it that way for 42 years. She's been here. So, so she's been here since I was 12. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she's been here longer yeah. than the township. That is the, uh, the certifying her. Yeah. That's the yeah. Yeah, part of the book. And I was, uh, I was told in, down in Springfield to TOI that what we're doing is probably a pretty safe way. Let's continue that way until we hear you. So I, I feel confident. I mean, she is testing to my signature at the bottom of the checks every month. These stay in our possession in Denise's office. Every check is there. Now, voucher is there for every check that's ever written. So, until they tell us different, I think we're in line. All right. That's all I got. Thank you, Ron. Well, thank you very much. Moving on. Go on to trustee suggestions and comments. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I got the yearly monthly meetings. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> uh, I, I apologize for that. We do have a, a monthly meeting schedule for next year. Um, I do need a motion to approve the monthly meetings for next month. I'll make that motion. I got a motion by Barbara Boyce. Second. Second. Barbara Delaney, any questions? Hearing none, can I uh, have a roll call, please? Uh, Rico? Yes. Delaney? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Boyce? Yes. Okay, the motion carries. I apologize for that. Trustees, comments and suggestions. I have a suggestion. Since we are going to be discussing our budget next month, um, if we can take into consideration for the 2019 fiscal year, um, I know I brought it up briefly in one other meeting uh, in regards to doing something for our veterans. 
um, we take into account when we're going through our budget. And I'm thinking something on the uh, lines of like the senior breakfast that we do for our seniors. Doesn't have to be that elaborate. I would actually like to see it done here at our township building. Obviously, the appropriate time is around Veterans Day, whenever it allows with our schedule. And I would not have a problem helping the spirit have this idea. I will put a line on the window for a suggestion as to how much you'd like to set aside for. Of course, we smell it. If you're talking breakfast or lunch, you know, we can kind of get some process first. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can kind of let you know about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, like I said, I think it'd be nice to have it here. I think it's a wonderful idea. We'll do that for our budget. Okay. Uh, Mm -hmm. Now we have a community center, we have a space, let's do some things. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Don't let me forget to put that on my list. Okay. And then secondly, to piggyback off of the discussions we're going to be having about our, um, our budget, I would like to ask, and I'm not sure how the other trustees feel about it, since it's a lot to go over and think about with the budget, is it possible to have two workshops instead of just the one? Sure. Okay. Okay. I mean, when it's presented to us, then you know, we have more time to look at it, think of questions for the next time. All right. Okay, that's all I have. I'll try to get the budget to put together a little earlier this year. We need some extra time. I have an extra first of the year and we'll start doing it. Okay. Any other comments or suggestions? Carrying on, we'll go on to the building report. Um, there's nothing too much going on. Uh, I did want to, uh, as you can see, the uh, stuff on the stage back there, things going on. We did the last two weekends, we had a play here from the Limestone Theater Group that's been partnering up with the city building. Um, I did attend one of the nights, it was uh, very entertaining. I'm really happy with what they did, and I know. Um, they were expecting about 45 people on Sunday for the matinee. I think there was about 65 that showed up. Um, I know Saturday night when I was here, there was a full house. So it was, it was really entertaining for local people doing play. I'm very proud of what they're doing. I'm happy to be partnered up with them in this building. It's a very uh, neat thing that they're doing. Um, last month, we had some discussion on the handicapped doors in the front. Um, you guys did, we talked about it, and of course we all told and I indicated me and you guys were happy with me to move forward on that, and I have, um, but I do, did want to formally have an approval of the um, projects, both, of both the, that project and that security law that we both discussed. So I would entertain a motion for the, to accept the contract for the handicap uh, doors in the front, from the force. I'll make that motion. I'll make a motion by Bar Delaney. I'll second it. Uh, let's get a second by Bar Voice. Any questions of the first one, the handicap? Did this go to your building committee that you have? Yeah, we talked about three people. Oh, okay. Uh, that, that was one of their top priorities to move that doors, the handicap doors up there. So that's what we kind of did on that. So which one are we being asked to? Right now it's just the uh, uh, handicap doors. Mm -hmm. Put in front of the building. And next will be the, the security wall upstairs. Okay. Okay. Well, did this include, I see, um, the side entrance door? When we talked yes. about that second door. Yeah, you can see on that estimate. The main entrance is above it, and the uh, side door entrance is below. Oh, so you want the both of mm -hmm. The side door entrance, only one door is working. Actually, as of yesterday, neither one is working, so I have nothing to go. I don't know why the button is not working all of a sudden the last two days. So this company, um, the Forks, they're the ones who put in these doors initially? Is that why you went with them? They're the ones that um, worked in the building when we did the remodel and did all the doors, locks, and everything. Okay. 
And we did go out for three digits, and this was the lowest bid. Where are they at? Are they local? Or are they local? You know, I don't know where right offhand. I know they're not real far because we talked about the locks and that all the time. And they're the ones that had the locks before in the, with the church. So when we moved in here, we okay. had that kind of character. All right. We just Any other questions? We did get a motion in the second. What did you like? No, it's first one. Yeah. So uh, I would ask for a roll call, please. Then. Alvarico? Yes. Delaney? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Boyce? Yes. All right, the next one is the security wall that we're trying to put upstairs for the last three months. Um, that bit is in here also. You guys indicated last month for me to go ahead, so I did sign the contract, but I did want to, again, it's formally approved. <coughs> so I'm going to entertain a motion to approve the estimate from the force for the security wall. Again, this is three, when three people come out and look at this, Mr. Chief is going to go about it. Um, I'll make the motion, but I would like to request next time, just, you know, I Courtesy, can we see the other bit as well? That's not her okay, sure. That's all I request. And a motion by Barb Delaney. I'll second it. Second by Barb Boyce. Any other questions or comments? You're not going to have a roll call, please. Alvarico? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Boyce? Yes. Delaney? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Under new business, we're going to go with the, uh, again, we have our uh, ordinance number 2018-6, the tax levy. Um, again, this is for the town, senior, and GA funds. Again, we're uh, basically, we're asking for the 5% and no more. We're not black boxing, and we are tax capped township, so we will only be able to uh, take the CPI. In the last two years, we've taken the CPI and lowered that too. So I do want to let you know that I probably will lower it even more than, than what the CPI is, but we do have to go through the 5%. So, do you remember what the CPI was last year? Last year, what was it? 1.8. 1.8. 1.8. Yeah, I think sure it's like 2.3 or something. 2.3, I think I heard was what they're estimating. For this year? So I need a motion to uh, approve the ordinance number 2018-6. Make that motion. I got a motion by Barb Boyce. Second. Second by Barb Delaney. Any questions? Hearing none, uh, roll call please. Alvarico? Yes. Delaney? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Boyce? Yes. All right, motion carries. Next on the agenda, is a, a approval of a donation to the Reeds Across America. This is another um, project that came to my desk um, through, uh, actually through Greg, our trustee. Um, he had asked me if we could uh, do this thing for our veterans, and basically putting wreaths on the graves at uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, Cemetery. I thought it was a good idea. We, uh, because of the time uh, to get it done, I told him I would individually ask the trustees if, how they felt about it. If I had a majority, I would go ahead and sign the check and do it. Because we couldn't wait until the meeting would have been too late. Uh, there was a unanimous, I heard from everybody that everybody was in favor of it. So I already did sign the check and it's there. And uh, actually, I thank you for that. Um, but we do, I do want to formally go through the, uh, the approval of this. So I would uh, ask for a motion to, uh, for the donation of $500 to the uh, Reeds Across America. I'll make that motion. I got a motion by Barb Delaney. I'll second it. Second by Barb Boyce. 
Any other questions or comments on that? That is actually um, going to be filed this weekend, Saturday, December 15th. This and and uh, there is a bus that's going from Blackbrook to Craig. So, um, yeah. I'm sorry, I thought that was okay. No, it says right here. It's just Anyone Saturday. Anyone need to say that to take the bus, though? 15. Oh, it's on here. It's, a, it's a great uh, event. It's, it's so crowded. It's, uh, it's really a very terrible um, yeah. experience. Sure. I did it once in the past, and it's just grown so big. It's, it's a beautiful event. And actually, I was thinking of we talked to the office when we do the lunch, and I think it's a good event. That was the next group that we um, all right, I got a motion to uh, all in favor? Well, I guess it's mine. Let's take a little call. Uh, Elrico? Yes. Delaney? Yes. Boys? Yes. Morelli? Yes. Great. Next time on the agenda, I'm sorry it took so long, <laughs> is approval of the donation to the United Way of Will County for the community baby shower. Um, Sarah is here to speak. Sarah, would you like to? Thank you. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you coming today. No, thank you for having me here tonight. I do appreciate the honor to be here. Um, thank you so much, Denise, for the invitation to be here and for your help and support with our community baby shower program. At the United Way of Old County, we recently launched a new program based upon loads of data that we had received from multiple communities throughout Will County, specifically tied to diaper need. One in three families are facing diaper need right now in our community. And diaper need isn't just tied to a family's socioeconomic status. So what's happening is we are finding families who are falling um, within the gap so they may be receiving other types of governmental assistance. But then we also have families who are making $1 more than what some of those programs will cover. We're also finding out that many families who are working, who are struggling to provide the ends meet for their families, they're not able to work and they're missing an average of four days of work per month because they simply cannot provide daycare facilities with enough diapers in order to keep their child in daycare. So in order to support families within our community, the community baby shower was a simple solution for us to address the diaper need within our community. And where, as Denise said before, the overwhelming response that we are seeing from community members who have such a simple need in order to care for their children. Everybody only wants to provide the best possible life and upbringing and well-being for their families. And if providing them a simple peace of mind, knowing that they have enough diapers to keep their child in daycare, to keep their baby's bottoms clean and diapered so we're not causing unnecessary health-related issues due to prolonged diaper uh, use. We are reinforcing how we can help families become self-sufficient in our community, uh, economically independent in order to provide and move forward within their own lives. So a simple program such as Community Baby Shower is allowing us to provide those diapers to those who are in need to help fill that gap. So again, it's not just diapering those babies' bottoms, but we are helping families maintain their self-sufficiency, gain their independence by helping to, again, fill that gap and ensure that they can continue to go to work to earn their paycheck so they can support their families. So we appreciate the honor to be here this evening and we are respectfully asking for a contribution from Lockport Township in order to help uh, support our community baby shower program because again, the program is growing and we are restocking our five diaper depot, diaper distribution centers on a weekly basis at this point. So we knew we had this need and it is beyond what our expectations were. So we are looking for your support this evening in order to help, uh, again, support our community, um, our Lockport Township residents, and I myself am a Lockport Township resident. 
So this is my community. Um, we were proud to bring this program here. You know that a lot of research had already been done by the youth committee here regarding this need. And your continued support uh, will help us uh, continue this program to help more families in our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that being said, I just wanted to bring everybody's attention that in our budget that we did last year, we did uh, have a line item in, uh, in our senior fund, uh, line item 4 6000 for the United Way of $500. Uh, it's all right. Everybody is okay with it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, you guys already approved the budget. I don't think it really needs to keep both of them in the Who needs those funds? Did you have it under senior fund? No, this is out of the town. Oh, that was the senior fund. I, 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 okay. Okay. Yeah, it's out of the town. Do you need a motion? So why don't we just, yeah, let's hold it a motion and we'll go about it. Uh, I make that motion. Make motion by the bar of Blaney. I'll second it. Second by Barb Boyce. Uh, any other questions on it? I just want to thank Sarah um, just for being that instrument to help us coordinate this whole uh, program. It, it, it really is um, it's very good. And we, we actually are one of five diverse distribution networks in all of Little County. So um, this board you know, will be very proud that, that you have um, uh, allowed us to, to have this program for for anybody, really. Um, right now we work with the fish food pantry. So they have little slips of paper, and they have to bring those pieces of paper into the clerk's office. And they are allowed to come in once a month and get diapers, just like they are allowed to come and get um, food. So, thank you, and this is going to continue to grow. Um, so, thank you, Ron. You have a roll call, please. Alberico? Yes. Delaney? Yes. Boyce? Yes. Corelli? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you, Senator. <coughs> um, old business, I just want to touch real quick uh, on the garbage referendum where we are with that. It didn't pass, like I said last month. We did have a meeting with the committee. We're putting together the packets right now for the, um, for the bidding process. Uh, I believe we'll be talking with the clerk's office. I'd like to maybe put it in the paper, maybe next week. Um, our plan, just so everybody's aware, is January 2nd. The bids will be sent out to all garbage companies, and we'll have a bid opening on January the last day, 30th to 31st. Okay, we'll just look at my calendar and make sure I'm not right. Is there anybody? January 31st will be the bid opening. And then after we uh, allow, well, once we open the bids, we'll bring it to the next February meeting, which I believe is the 5th. Right here, the 5th. And we will uh, put that on the motion to be approved, the bid, and then we'll negotiate and get hopefully started by April or May. Next year. Garbage. Pick up some. I'm excited about it. I think it's going to help going pretty good. I, everybody's excited about um, getting the garbage contract for everybody. I'll just tell you a quick story. I shouldn't. But um, personally, I just had some uh, dishwasher that I was trying to get rid of, and I called my garbage company. I pay seventy dollars a month for garbage pickup out there, and they don't pick up big items. And they pick up big items in Lockport for twenty bucks a month. So that's why this is so important to the community out in the uh, unincorporated areas. So I think it's going to be a good project. Uh, other than that, I did receive a few uh, thank you cards. Again, uh, Gary, this is from you, uh, acknowledging that, uh, again, uh, our sincere um, feelings for your death of your mother. And thank you for the card. And I did get a thank you card from um, the Reeves. Oh, no, I'm sorry, this isn't from the Reeves. I, I, I made that mistake. This is a card from the veterans that we did uh, when we had our Halloween uh, truck and treat. We had extra candy. We donated it to the uh, troops. Across, uh, uh, Operation Care Package. 
So they just have to keep them there. They get it. So we have a trainer. Two more for our little level. <laughs> um, I have nothing else tonight except that I wanted to wish everybody again a Merry Christmas and a very happy holiday season, whatever denomination or festival you're in. I hope the New Year is good for everybody. Uh, that being said, uh, I will entertain a motion for Jerry. I'll make that motion. I got a motion by Barb Blaine. I'll second it. Second by Barb Boyce. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, Thank you very much, everybody, and have a wonderful evening.